Welcome, everybody. It's time once again for another episode of WVU Marketing Communications Today. Live from West Virginia University. It's the one show that sits at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and marketing practice. With our host today, our guest host, Lee Silverman. Hey, Lee, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Paul. I'm Lee Silverman, and I am excited to be your host for this edition of WVU Marketing Communications Today, entitled Living Comfortably with Data. Data are everywhere, so much so that most organizations wanting to start the data-driven design process can easily become overwhelmed. Numerous studies have shown that companies driving decisions with data experience greater growth than those that don't. But the key to doing this well for the long haul is to start with a less is more approach. Getting comfortable with data requires that you choose initially what matters to you rather than drinking from the fire hose. I'm hard pressed to think of a more relevant topic given our current client climate. And joining us momentarily will be Mark Tebow. Mark specializes in helping non-technology companies to understand the current digital landscape and in helping technology companies to develop strategies to help them grow. He spent a decade as a program builder with Lowe's Corporate and was on their omni-channel selling team. Mark currently teaches web analytics, SEO, and mobile marketing at West Virginia University's IMC Master's Program, and he is engaged in providing marketing and business development strategy support to technology industry clients in his role at Growth Strategy Advisors. Mark, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm glad to be here, Lee. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Let's dig right in, and let me ask you, if you are not currently a data-driven decision-making organization, how do you get started? That's a great question. First of all, of course, we're going to mainly be speaking from a marketing perspective here today, but uh, realistically, you might want to do this in HR, operations, finance. Um, at a starting point, I think the thing that is most important is you must feel the need. You, you must see a pressing issue, and it has to be something that you don't have answers for. Because quite frankly, without that mindset, you will not. You just won't move forward. And so, what you need to do is have an organization that comes to that realization that you know what, that reaction, decision making just isn't going to cut it anymore. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you find yourself actually stuck in the situation where you're responsible for this initiative, I think the key is to have questions, well-defined business questions to answer, okay. and develop the strategy for getting there before you, you, know, you even start. I mean, it sounds simple, but if your goal is to get one thing, maybe two things accomplished uh, that you don't know now, um, this, is, this is a great way to go. So you need to understand your current state, your goals, mm -hmm. your objectives, your strategies, and you need to know what data you will have to collect in order to answer those questions and also how to collect the data and have an analysis methodology. And you need to do that all in advance. You need to have agreement from the organization and everybody needs to buy in. So, you know, really what you need to do is but more than anything, you need to get started because the reality is that what you want to do if you're starting out on this road is generate some short-term wins. <laughs> and you need okay. to track and celebrate these, these wins. All right. So it sounds like really you've got to make that decision to leap off the diving board that you're going to do this. And a well-thought-out plan is key. What is it we need to know? What are the questions we need to answer? How are we going to go about this? And possibly with the foresight to think about how are we going to analyze this once we've collected it on the back end? Lee, that's absolutely correct. I mean, you know, to give you an example, I mean, one of the things that everybody talks about right now is how different and the reality is that they're not the same. So how are they different? You know, well, we'd want to be measuring things like, you know, time on site, number of pages, conversions, you know, what the purchases, what the downloads might be. I mean, if I'm an e-commerce site, this is probably a question that's keeping me awake at night. You know, I want to know how to make mm -hmm. conversions easier on mobile because that's not something that happens very often today. 
Sure. And, and in that regard, let me ask you, what are the dangers of collecting too much data too soon? Well, that's, that's a great question. Quite frankly, the easy answer is it can be overwhelming. I mean, <laughs> in my web analytics and SEO course, I hear that all the time. You know, we start them out on Google Analytics, and it's like, oh, my goodness. But by the end of the class, we're good. Because the reality is that if you take it a little bit at a time, it's not so overwhelming, and what you do is you learn what you can learn, and you use that to take you forward. I mean, you know, you use the phrase, less is more, in the intro, and, you know, I went to Illinois Tech, and, of course, Mies van der Rohe founded the architecture school was there, and that was his saying. <laughs> and it is very true today. I mean, I, I think back to a time when supermarkets, used to collect all this incredible data off the cash registers, and they had quote-unquote loyalty programs. Mm -hmm. But the ability to analyze all that data at that time just wasn't there. So the net result is you went into the supermarket, you were expecting this great thing, and all that would happen is they'd spit out coupons to you out of these little machines that they had. So real the reality is that focus is, is what is needed. You know, um, So if this is new to you, what you want to do is you want to start out collecting data in areas where you have some familiarity and where you have some hope and prayer that you might be able to interpret the results. I mean, because if you go into something that's completely unknown to you, the data can get a little weird. It may take you in the wrong direction, and there's a very high risk of interpreting it. And so, you know, I don't know if we want to get into this, but really what you should start at is, is a level of data that's more at the macro level than the micro level. Everybody wants to know immediately, how do I plot out the entire customer journey? You know, how do I know everything I need to know about Lee Silverman so I can make, you know, his, 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 <laughs> his, his, his life wonderful on my site. Eventually, you know, some brands get there, but that's really not where you start. I mean, you know, what you have to start out with is demonstrate a ballpark knowledge of what your customer is about what may or may not be beneficial, and, you know, get that right, and then build a relationship and develop more data as you go along. Because as you said, you know, um, taking a data-based approach tends to improve the customer relationship. It tends to improve mm -hmm. conversions. But you're, you're not going to get there overnight. You're not going to be uh, a NASCAR driver immediately. Sure. And it, it sounds like one of the underscoring points here is we're looking for quality over quantity with that fire hose type analogy gives me a great mental visual on that. Yes, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. So the question is, one, you don't want to be drowning in the data. But mm -hmm. two, even on individual data points, you don't want to have, um, you know, 10,000 different elements of data when probably you only really need five or six to be 80% right. So, <laughs> yeah, sure. the one, one of the things with big data, I mean, big data is great, but one of the things is that really um, a lot of it's wrong. And, and, you know, the people who interpret that for a living and the people who collect it and manage it and catalog it are not always right. So the fact is what you want to do is you want to be in a situation where any appeals you make to an individual or a segment of your target audience is going to be the right thing to do. Okay. And in a moment, we're going to be going to break. But let me just run this by you if you have any quick insights you can share. I understand that data and technology make it easier to change direction in marketing today. Can this be a good thing or a bad thing or a combination? Well, I mean, overall... Overall, it's a good thing because um, the ability to make adjustments um, when things are not working right is a good thing. So if I have a digital campaign mm -hmm. and it's on our website and it's easy enough to shift that as compared to the old days when with traditional media where that would incur great expense. I mean, I'd be changing television schedules. I'd be refilming everything. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. On the other hand... It's very easy to change it, so a lot of times we tend to overreact, and, and basically uh -huh. it's not all that expensive to overreact, but what, had, what happens a lot of times is we overreact, we think we did the right thing, 
And lo and behold, we just didn't let the, the, the situation play out. I mean, I had it. If we have the time before the break, I mean, I can give you an example of that that I actually lived through. Well, perhaps we can talk about that as soon as we head back into it. Uh, so it really sounds like with with great power that those buttons and keys on the desk comes the responsibility uh, and temperament of knowing when and how fast to draw and use them. That's right. That's right. You, 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 you can't overreact to everything. You need to still think about what it is that you're attempting to do and and make a rational approach. Okay, well, let's take a break for some important announcements. We'll return shortly and continue our discussion on Living Comfortably with Data with Mark Tebow. And just a quick uh, reminder, well, this is something we really all know. Marketing is about more than ads and press releases. Yeah, it really is. Marketing is about building relationships. And if you believe that and accept that, then why not connect with other marketing professionals at West Virginia University's Integrate Conference right here in Morgantown, West Virginia, August 1st through the 4th. You can network and learn from industry leaders, speakers representing large and innovative organizations like Cisco and Facebook, as well as agencies like Cappuccino and Fujicato. Register today at integrate.wvu.edu. Integrate.wvu for West Virginia University dot edu and after you do that you might check out the overall online data marketing communications program at west virginia university you know it's the first graduate program to focus on data's impact on marketing communications you can learn innovative strategies from award-winning faculty as you shape the future of marketing imagine that shape the future of marketing at dmc.wvu.edu that's the Data Marketing Communications Program at West Virginia University. All right, I always say a lot of letters, a lot of acronyms for a lot of important stuff here, and uh, maybe these guys will explain some of them to us here today as they start to dig into big data. Lee Silverman, back to Lee and his guest. Thanks so much, Paul. Welcome back. We're talking to Mark Tebow, and our topic today is Living Comfortably with Data. Mark, let's go ahead and continue with our discussion here. Um, have you seen any downsides to a data-driven approach? There are downsides to it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a, in the corporate world, it's very hard to get fired for making a rational decision. And a lot of times, you can support almost any decision you want with data. So... One of the things you need to do is, if you're going to get involved in a program like this, is you need to have a data governance program. So again, you know, getting back to what I said earlier, everybody needs to agree on what's being collected, who it's being collected from. Okay. Uh, now, you, you make an interesting point here. And in light of recent events concerning data security and breaches occurring at major retailers, a credit bureau, and even a social media giant, do you have any thoughts in terms of what kinds of data should be collected and kept and how to ensure safety for all concerned in doing so? Well, that's, 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 a, that's a great question. I mean, one of the things that we're seeing in the mobile environment, which mm -hmm. is really a transparency risk, but is, is the whole concept of the mobile wallets. Now, everybody thinks this, this is problematic, but the reality is Using a mobile wallet in conjunction with uh, a near-field communication device is probably one of the safest ways that you can actually pay short of cash right now because of the fact that the only thing you're ever transmitting is a transaction. So mm -hmm. um, as, as opposed to, you know, when you swipe a credit card and all, you know, all of your data goes um, throughout the world. You know, it's interesting, though, uh, a lot of, you know, the security and the scraping issues that we're talking about. Um, one of the things, you know, that came out in the most recent study is the fact that a lot of the data that was being collected and used or misused, depending on how you look at it, is things that actually marketers have been collecting for years and getting better and better and better at that. So, you know, the question is, you know, when you have a... Uh, a credit, a credit rating bureau that gets hacked, 
how do you how do you stop that? And uh, sure. I don't know that we fully have the answer to that yet. Okay, and that's absolutely fair, and I appreciate the insights that you can share on it. Um, and speaking of which, what kinds of insights might we draw from data in our decision-making process? That's that's a good point because really, that's how we that's how we improve. You know, because it, it initially will not likely to point you in the right direction if you don't have the right goals and objectives to start out with. But the really the key is you collect the data, you know, you, you all agree on the methodology, the analysis method. Um, you know, the, the real key here is understanding situation and context. So if you understand situation and context, it can tell you a lot. So I can better understand the target audience. I can understand better what they want. I can better segment the audience. Um, and I can better understand why they buy. I better mm -hmm. understand the customer journey, so the timing, the length, the situation, steps in the process, hurdles that people face. And and so initially I start out collecting a lot of the how, a lot of the what, a lot of the who, and mm -hmm. eventually, you know, the data process in conjunction with some other things I might do will lead me to the why. So and, okay. and that, that, that's where we want to be. And that, I think, answers it extremely well. Um, now, we talked a lot about kind of this plan and moving in and, and attempting to do this, having your questions, your methods, and so forth in place. What kinds of tools and resources might one use to examine data? That is, that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, the key is if you're not currently a data-driven organization, you want to start small. So, and again, thinking marketing... Um, you know, if we want to start out, for example, on the web, you want to get yourself a very solid web analytics um, program. You'd also want to be looking at social media analytics. Now, the, the issue there is with social media is everybody gets involved with likes and, and you know, when really what you should really be interested in social media is, is shared. I was just agreeing. It makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Please continue. Okay, now as I say, as you get more comfortable and you start to move up, you start to realize there are more things that I need. So, you know, one of the first things that any organization would probably want to undertake is they want to get a, visual, a data visualization tool. So, you know, maybe something like Tableau or Google mm -hmm. Data Studio. And, and because a lot of times it's the visualization of the data that will help to tell the story. You know, that's, that's very important. Because not only do they build charts and graphs, but they have beautiful little 3D models sometimes, and you can slice and dice and, and do all sorts of things. The other thing that would be really important if you're, you know, would be to have some sort of heat mapping um, type of program. So in other words, if, if I'm an e-commerce company again, and I need to know where people are dropping off, where they're on the page, I need to know how far down they scroll, what points on the page they're finding more interesting. And the heat mapping program can help me see that. They can help me see they like these products as opposed to these. I'm also going to want to get an A-B and testing tool. So I'm going to want to do A-B testing or multivariate testing. And I'm going to want something like Optimizely. And, and in that case, you know, because again, if I have multiple versions of something out there, and this gets back to how easy it is to change. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just willy-nilly change something. I want to be able to go out and put out um, four different versions to 25% each of my population and see how they Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and it sounds like you're using a lot of this to make informed decisions. There's what the numbers might say that you mentioned some visual tools such as heat map and so forth and testing protocols. But let me ask you, uh, you also have background in SEO and mobile, and we've only got a moment or two left in this, but are there things that we can glean from the data that might make us help inform decisions within SEO and mobile? Okay, yes. I, here, The thing I think with, with mobile that everybody needs to keep in mind is that mobile is, is different. So how I react on my mobile device is not necessarily how I react on my on my laptop or in person. So the fact is, 
I, and the other problem that we run into is I may not react the same on Facebook as I do on Twitter or as I do on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So the reality that we're seeing is that we actually need multiple personas depending on the platform we're using, and being able to marry all this data together is, is, is really important. So, you know, Good. how do I behave? when I'm out and about and I'm, on, and I'm on my phone as opposed to when I'm sitting at my desk. Does the fact that I have a smartphone and I'm in the store cause different behavior than it, than it used to? The answer to that is definitely yes. I mean, and this is, again, why we have all this beacon technology and, and more near-field communication technology. And, and the reality is that today, it's a double-edged sword, but today we probably know more about a given individual than they probably want us to know because of, specifically because of the phone. Because you may change your phone, but you rarely change your phone number. <laughs> sure. And, and, and the phone number, along with the IMEI number of your phone, is what enables the carriers, the operating systems, the browsers, the data warehouses to pull it together and basically build a profile of what you're all about. Wow, there is quite a lot working in the background to help form these opinions. And again, it sounds like with great power comes this this trust and we <laughs> use the data for good. Uh, Mark, I think we're just about out of time. I just wanted to say you've been a wonderful guest and thank you so much for bringing with us, bringing and being here with us today, bringing your insights. I know I did and I'm sure our listeners did as well get some great ideas out of this. Uh, so thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Thank you, Lee. It was a pleasure. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to talking to you another time. Paul, thank you, and back to you, sir. Okay. You've been listening, as always, to another episode of WVU Marketing Communications Today. From West Virginia University, the one place that sits at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and marketing practice. Right here in the Funnel Radio Network for at work listeners like you.